the whole foundation of what I'm doing is to give hope, give a bit of light to make any Exmo warrior listening to this by another day. Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 98 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you a story of perseverance, consistency, putting one foot in front of the other, and ultimately finding hope with my guest who's joining me today to share her personal journey living with eczema. And don't worry, it doesn't matter whether you have eczema or not, because truthfully, the lessons that I feel we all could learn from my guest today can transcend the specific diagnosis that you have. So I believe that you too will find hope in the way that my guest has come to look at her journey living with eczema. Before we dive into that conversation, I wanted to give a shout out to NMIL11, who left a really wonderful review over on iTunes saying that the Healthy Skin Show is a one-stop shop when it comes to all things skin, gut, and inflammation. It would have taken me years to dig and find the type of information and expert interviews if I had to do it on my own. Thank you so much, NMIL11. I really appreciate you sharing that because that's my goal in putting this entire podcast together was to help consolidate all the information that was just basically hanging out there with no real ties and giving you guys a way to find connections, to learn more information without having to spend hours and hours and months and months and maybe even years digging through information that you might not even fully understand. I wanted to make it usable and doable for you so that if you ultimately want to discuss something with your doctor or share an idea, you can speak about it in an intelligent way. Reviews mean so much to me. So if you haven't done so yet, please take a moment, head on over to your podcast platform of choice, rate and review the show. It means a ton. And because you guys have been sending in a bunch of listener questions, I wanted to make sure to answer this question submitted by Amelia. Amelia asks, sleeping is a real challenge because I feel like I'm itching myself like crazy. Do you have any tips? I feel so tired and I'm dragging all day because of this. I've tried magnesium. It helps some, but not nearly enough. Please help. Thank you so much for submitting this question, Amelia. It's a really good one. And oftentimes what I've found with clients who have similar complaints is it could be one of two things. The first thing to consider is that it's possible that your phase two liver detoxification has become overwhelmed. I discussed this entire process and what that means back in episode number 47. So if you're not familiar with this, go back and listen to that episode. The essential part of this conversation is that that particular process requires very specific nutrients, or I like to call them ingredients when we're talking about actual biochemical pathways. This issue of depleting those nutrients does not mean that you go do a liver detox. And again, Episode 47 will answer the questions as to why on that. But when these toxins hang out way too long, they can cause all sorts of issues. So that's why it's really important that you check that out and consider phase two liver detox overwhelm as one of the underlying driving reasons that's contributing to itching. Now, one thing that you can do to help is you could try glycine powder. I found that somewhere between three to six grams a day can be helpful. You should try to not take this with food if this is the only liver detox support that you are taking. Just add about three grams to a small glass of water, swirl it around and drink it. It does taste a little bit on the sweet side. So most clients find that it's pretty pleasant. You could do that in the morning and then sometime mid-afternoon and see if that helps. The next thing to try would be a very little known micronutrient called molybdenum, which was discussed back in episode number 42 with Krista Bigler. Again, that's a lengthier conversation. Listen to that episode. It'll give you the information that you need. The next thing to consider is that it could be an infection or infections hiding underneath the surface that don't make you sick outright, but yet you have these weird symptoms that are driving you nuts. 
So it may be worthwhile to investigate whether there are bacterial, fungal, or even parasitic infections lingering under the surface. The last thing to consider would be melatonin. There's some interesting research out there on using melatonin to help support sleep in those who have eczema and psoriasis. However, just realize that melatonin is a hormone and when you supplement with it, you do tell your body that it doesn't need to produce its own melatonin. So generally speaking, I don't recommend melatonin as the first step. It's usually one of the last pieces of the toolbox that I will reach for. And with that, my goal is ultimately to get the person to a more normal sleeping pattern. That said, it's wisest to discuss any new additions to your supplement regimen with your doctor, even if you're not taking any medication, but especially if you are taking medication, because there can be interactions that you won't necessarily know about, and it's best to check ahead of time before you start supplementing and end up with a problem. I love questions like this because it gives me the opportunity to help support you guys exactly where you are. If you have a burning question, head on over to HealthySkinShow.com, scroll down a tad, you'll see a little blue microphone, and that's where you can leave us a voicemail or submit a question through the website to be included in an upcoming episode. All right, I think we should dive into our conversation now with my guest, Camille Knowles. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Healthy Skin Show. Today, I've got a guest with me, someone whom I really, really appreciate for all of the joyful hope that she gives to people who struggle with eczema, though I would also argue that this is something that if you're just struggling with a chronic skin condition would probably also give you hope as well. Um, But she's actually from the other side of the pond in Great Britain. And I'm so blessed that she was able to figure out a time so that we could do this interview. Some of you may have seen her on the Eczema Psoriasis Awareness Week as well and telling her whole story. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. But if you have not yet made yourself familiar with Camille Knowles, she is a health coach, natural chef, and most importantly, she is a fellow eczema warrior. She's authored the book called The Beauty of Eczema, The Guide to Living a Life Beyond Eczema. While eczema is part of her journey, Camille is adamant that it doesn't define her. She discovered how a positive mindset, food, lifestyle, skincare, and relaxation techniques could help her get gorgeous, glowing skin. Camille, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So will you give us a short recap? Because everybody can hear Camille's long story of her eczema and what's going on. But just because I want to dive into your principles and things, but would you just tell everybody a little bit about your eczema journey? Yeah. So in short, suffered with it since I was six years old. It bothered me a little bit during high school where, you know, people would see cuts all over my hands in computer class. Really bothered me at boarding school where I ended up restricting my diet. And then when I was 21, that was the pinnacle of the dark moment with eczema where I was covered head to toe in it. My Mm. face got infected, so it swelled double the size. and My hair was falling out. I was unrecognizable, extremely ill, and went into hospital. Mm. And the doctor said, the best case scenario for you is antidepressants and steroid cream to cope with the condition. There is no cure for eczema. So I left hospital in a very 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 dark place and um, took myself on a journey thanks to my family um, to find a way to live a life beyond eczema completely medication free Mm -hmm. and all using lifestyle tools and I ended up finding and learning that there's not just one puzzle piece that's going to help you live a life beyond eczema it is a very variation of puzzle pieces when they match up we live a whole life beyond eczema and um, so that is the hope principles. Yeah. And and before we get into the hope principles, I just want to highlight for everyone because I thought it was so interesting as part of your story that you did a massive elimination diet that got to such a restricted place that that actually contributed to having a major flare and you being hospitalized. So for anybody listening to this who's like, "Wait, you could be hospitalized due to your eczema?" Yes, it is possible. Um, So do you have any words of wisdom for people who are listening to this thinking that if they just take out more and more foods, that that is going to solve their problems? 
Yeah, definitely not. Um, I was at this place where I thought food was the enemy and that as long as I restricted myself from all these bad foods that were causing my eczema, then I was going to live a life free of it. And it turned out that the more and more and more restrictive I got, mm. the less I had to eat and the more afraid of food I was, the more stress was put on my body, the more nutrient deficient I got was actually causing me to flare up more so even though I think food is a real key principle it has got to be taken in a balanced approach and with joy instead of fear yeah and and that I think too that kind of played a part into you developing the hope principles right because it's not just about food food's a piece of this puzzle so could you tell us what are the hope principles Yes. So HOPE, the reason it was under the HOPE acronym was because, again, the whole foundation of what I'm doing is to give hope, Mm -hmm. give a bit of light to make any eczema warrior listening to this fight another day. Because I was that girl sat in bed crying and not seeing a bright future for myself. And I was fed up and I wanted to give up. Mm -hmm. And all I wanted back then was just a slither of hope to make me fight again and that's what I'm trying to offer so that's why it's under the acronym HOPE and H stands for home and under home there is sleep declutter and mindful meditation so it's all about your environment at home and I talk about decluttering because I feel like clearing your space Mm. makes you have clear mind clear mind clear skin Sleep is most underestimated healing tool. And although it's quite difficult to get when you have eczema, when you focus on the other principles, it makes it easier to sleep. So sleep's under home. And also mindful meditation environment, you know, where you're at in your head and where you're at in your environment. I find that, um, you know, having a, a calming mind really helps. But also I've found that the climate affects my skin and wherever I'm at, I need to make it feel like home. And even though it's not that easy to move abroad to a sunnier climate because the sunshine helps my skin, I try and put pieces of that sunnier climate into my home, like shells in my bathroom and things like that that just make me feel calm and at ease. Um, O stands for optimism because I believe that a positive mindset is extremely healing. There's actually scientific studies to show that thinking positive thoughts promotes healing chemicals that heal the body and when you think negative thoughts it actually breaks down the immune system Mm. so optimism under optimism there is visualization so i talk about vision boards focusing on something a life beyond what you want for example five years ago i focused on the career i'm doing at the moment and healing and being well and i've managed to achieve it by focusing and looking at it every day i talk about affirmations positive statements to affirm to yourself every single day that will rewire your subconscious mind to think more positive and journaling because I find that journaling gratitude journaling helps you focus on the positives but also helps you um, self-analyze where you're at every single day and kind of speak to yourself and let out your emotions and then under p is purpose and pampering so purpose again finding something that gives you a reason to fight and live, you know, a life beyond eczema. For me, it was to help millions of other people that were in the position that I was in. So that's my purpose. But a purpose could be being a great mom or um, helping people in the charity or anything that just makes you feel like you're needed in this world. Pampering, I talk about using natural skincare, skincare that doesn't flare up your skin, that soothes your skin. And then E stands for ecotherapy, exercise and eating well so ecotherapy getting out in nature exercise moving your body motion creates positive emotion and what was the eating well so again eating well not eating perfect Mm -hmm. so I focus on the joy around food I do avoid gluten dairy and refined sugar but I focus on really colorful food that fill me with passion and cooking is one of those things that makes me happy again now so I love food and want to share that there's it's important to have a balance when eating well and then finally to wrap up the hope principles is s for stress and support because i think it's really important to focus on what um your stress triggers are and use the hope principles to keep them under wraps and to have a support network either your family your friends or if you feel like you've not got that then reaching out to the excellent community feel like you know not feeling alone is so healing yeah. And actually, I, I want to ask you a little bit about the support piece, yes. because 
you had shared with me, and I think you, you actually alluded to it a moment ago, that you were in a really dark place after you left the hospital because of the experience you had with the doctors and the mindset. Do you want to share a little bit about that moment in time and how that impacted you and then sharing that with your family and, and the, what they shared with you? Yes. So obviously when I was in the hospital, I was told antidepressants, steroids, and I looked and felt extremely ill. I left the hospital. And if I think back to it now, I try and not get emotional. And I think I've told my story that many times. I'm a bit numb to it. But if I think back, all I can see is darkness, emptiness, and just no hope. Picture zero hope that I was in that place. And I felt like a liability to my family. Um, because they had to help care for me, essentially. I couldn't have a fulfilling career. I felt like I couldn't be a good partner in a relationship. I just felt like me being here was just a waste because Mm. I couldn't fulfill what I I felt this world needed. Um, So I turned to my family and told them that and said, you know, that this world's probably better off without me. I'm just a liability. And obviously that break broke them. And it breaks me to think of little me thinking like that. And they turned around to me and said, no, no, this is not you, Camille. Your condition has taken over you mm-hmm. and we're going to find a way out. So for anybody listening to this and they're feeling in that really dark place and they have no hope, I want to tell you there is a way out, mm-hmm. there is hope, and there is a beautiful life beyond eczema. And that is tools now that you can turn to, to get yourself out of that place. Yeah. And you and I both, I mean, I had lost so much of my life. It's like almost as if the eczema started to steal, even the mo- the simplest of moments, like being able to wash. Like It was interesting. You had shared that, like you had cuts everywhere. So just the act of taking a shower was so, so physically full body painful. I mean, it was just my hands, but I couldn't even wash my hair. I couldn't wash myself because I couldn't touch water even. Yes. And, you know, you had also shared too, that the pain can be debilitating. And that's a piece that people oftentimes overlook because they only see these external issues. But in reality, there's so much that goes on underneath. And having a support system is incredibly important because of the research that has come out demonstrating that people with eczema have a pretty significant risk of even considering suicide. And that's horrible. I don't know why we're not talking about this more because that to me is a mental health crisis right there within this large community. Eczema is one of the largest atopic dermatitis is one of the most common skin conditions worldwide. Yes. And we should be talking about that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love your work because you've got these books that help people where they are, right? So it's not like tomorrow your life's going to be completely different, right? It's like what takes you in steps. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So obviously the hope principles is quite a few moving parts. And even though they're small little simple things to add to your day, you might think, Camille, how do I start with the hope principles? I have no idea. And that is why I created the hope circle in the journal, which I'll just show now. So here is the hope circle. And I created this as a tool for finding out which hope principle would benefit your life most right now. So each of the segments are one of the hope principles and elements of them. And you write from one to five, put a little dot where you're at on each of those things. So if you're not sleeping well, it's a one. And if you're sleeping really well, it's a five. So then you join up all the dots and you see, you'll notice when you join it up where you're falling short. And then further down here, there's like three segments and it says, what am I going to focus on? Mm. So you write the three hope principles you're going to focus on. And that is a really good monthly check-in. It's a monthly check-in in the journal. And you focus on those morning and evening pages and reflect with yourself. And you'll actually notice that a month later when you redo it, I bet those hope principles have moved up. And it's just keeping all of these in balance. It doesn't have to be five, 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 five everywhere. It's just about everywhere being in balance. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things is, so you have the Beauty of Eczema book. Yes. And then you have the journal. Yes. All of which, everyone, no matter where you live, if you're tuning in, are available on Amazon. 
So we will have the links in the show notes for you to go grab copies of those, um, along with how to connect with Camille and her website, etc. But the interesting thing that I was that just sort of like popped into my mind as you were talking is what this is, is an opportunity and almost an invitation to turn back inward and really meet yourself and pay attention to yourself and care for yourself as opposed to being fixated on the skin. Like, oh my goodness, my skin's a mess. I look ugly. I look awful. And you get in this whirlwind of just fixating on what's going on on the outside and the physical symptoms you feel, but you're actually inviting somebody to say, you know what? Maybe this is like you were saying, the beauty of it is that this is the opportunity to reorient yourself to look at life from a different way. Would you agree with that? Definitely. Definitely. I saw it as my opportunity to see the beauty in something that I struggle with. Mm. You know, eczema is something that, you know, hasn't totally gone away from me. I sometimes still flare up, but I've now seen that as a blessing. Mm. And also I like to say a friend, you know, that friend that when you're doing something that's not so great for you and they're like, Hey, why are you doing that? You know, it's not great for you. I see eczema as that sign and it'll flare up when I'm pushing myself too much. I'm not getting enough sleep or I'm not eating well. And it's that little friend that goes, hey, take care of you now Mm. or stop pouring out onto others. Think about you. And I go, okay, eczema, I'm going to get an early night. And I see see it as my physical sign to do what's best for me. And I feel blessed that I'm able to view my eczema in that way. And I want other people to be able to view it in that way too because some people don't have those signs and then it's too late so we actually can look at our eczema and say hey thank you for giving me the signs that I need to get back on track with what's best for me Mm. Uh, Camille I have one last question for you so I know for a lot of people listening to this they might go okay so this sounds like I'm saying a lot of yeses to me like focus on me but what if that's hard for someone And so maybe the initial step is just learning how to say no. Did you have to learn in the process of how to say no? Right, because you're saying, I'm going to turn in. What if you had an invitation to go out that night? Do you have any thoughts on how do you start to say no to the things that aren't on the path that's best for what you need to do for you? I came up with this phrase, which is own who you are. And I say it to myself all the time because, and I also say to myself, Camille, fit out, don't fit in. Because a lot of my choices tend to be not the norm and not everyone struggles or lives with eczema. So I've had to learn to fit out and see that as a great thing and own who I am and be my own best friend. So if sometimes, you know, people are going out and I know it's best for me to stay in, then I'll say to myself, okay, if I'm being my own best friend right now, what would I say? And I would say, stay in, do what's best for you. To protect yourself as you would someone you love, that is what really helped me. Yeah. And actually, that is a really brilliant, that's really brilliant. I love that. I I think that's a wonderful thing because many of us have felt like outsiders. You know, I hear stories very similar. We've all had these stories when we've struggled with skin issues where we feel very isolated. It's very difficult to fit in because You can't do the things that quote unquote normal people do. And you start to get into this space where you're sort of, why do they get to live a normal life? And it's not me. Why not me? This isn't fair. And for you, you're saying, no, you know what? I'm just going to like embrace the fact that I'm not going to exactly fit into that. And that's okay. I'm going to love that. Yeah. I think that's a great mindset to have to share with everyone. And it's something that you, you don't have to be an adult to do yes you could do as a teenager which (laughs) considering I mean I was bullied as a kid I I wish that I had heard that even if I I didn't have any skin issues then and that would have been helpful to hear at the time so I think it's really applicable well I just want to thank you so much for being a guest on the show and maybe we can have you come back sometime and we can dive deeper into some of these principles and parts of your story and advice that you'd like to share with people So for everybody listening, like I said, we'll put everything in the show notes. So it's really easy to find Camille as well as get copies of her books and you can get digital copies, right? Yes. We've just launched the ebook of the Beauty of Eczema book. And with that, well, with the pre-launch, it comes with the digital version of the Positive Scribes journal. 
but actually I, we are also launching a digital positive scribes four week mini journal so you will be able to get both digitally yeah. awesome that is great and everyone please go check her out connect with her i think she's an asset and a really a gem as part of this community and i'm so i love tuning into her stories on instagram they're very positive i love seeing what she's doing um, so hopefully if you're on Instagram, you will do so too. All right. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And Camille, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. I have to tell you that Camille is someone whom I feel like I check in daily with because I follow her on Instagram and I love her approach and her outlook on life. It is truly inspiring. And I'll tell you this much. Sometimes I'm skeptical of people that seem really, really positive positive. But the thing is, Camille is really this way. I've watched her over many, many months. I've interacted with her. I've had a number of conversations with her. And this is how she is. So I feel incredibly blessed to have her here on the show to be able to share her work with you, as well as her story. Wow, right? Her story is so inspiring. All of the resources that Camille has available to you can be found in the show notes over at skinterrupt.com forward slash 098. If you have any questions or thoughts after listening to this interview, head over there. That way you can leave a comment and we can keep the conversation going. And don't forget, please hit subscribe to the podcast. You guys know I love when you rate and review the podcast. But I equally love it when you hit subscribe because that means the next episode will land on your mobile device without you having to do a thing. And last but not least, you got to share this episode. I'm sure that you're listening to this going, oh my goodness, so-and-so so needs to hear this. My challenge to you today is to share this podcast with at least one person. If you know people in a Facebook group that probably need to hear this, share it in that Facebook group. Do whatever you can to spread hope because hope is something that can be very hard to come by the longer that you've been dealing with chronic skin rashes that feel like there's no light at the end of the tunnel ahead. This could be the one spark of inspiration that could help someone realize that they've got to keep on going. All right. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.